43. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, so we have two LiOH solid plus carbon dioxide, CO2 gas, which will give us lithium carbonate, Li2CO3 solid plus water vapor, H2O gas. And they give us that temperature, 575 degrees Celsius. Now from that temperature, we have to find the equilibrium constant. Now remember, equilibrium constant is capital K, right? Now, it doesn't really matter what K value we're searching for, Ka, Kp, Kc, Kb, right? I'm going to guesstimate that we're probably searching for a Kp here because I do see that we have gases and gases usually have pressure values, Kp, P for pressure, but it doesn't matter because when it comes down to the equilibrium constant with the given temperature, there generally is only one formula and it doesn't matter what K it is. It's this formula down here. So K equals, let's just put it up here, K equals the E function on the calculator, and the E is raised to negative delta G divided by R times T. Here's your equilibrium constant, here's your temperature. So for solving for equilibrium constant, I need to know these three variables. Now they didn't tell me an R value, that's because it's always a constant number. If you're using this formula, and we're using energy values, we're going to use the R value of 8.314. Now the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So these units, joules and Kelvin, dictate what the delta G value and the temperature is. Now, temperature, it's in Kelvin for the R value, which means that this temperature has to be in Kelvin. But they gave us Celsius. That's okay, right? We could just quickly convert 575 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. Easiest, uh, not easiest, but you know, Celsius to Kelvin, you could plus 273. More specifically, you can add 273.15, which is what I'll do just to get a little bit more exact answer. So 575 plus 273.15, 575 plus 273.15, there you go. And you get 848. 0.15. Maybe I'll bring this K over and we're all good for the temperature. So we have R, we have T, E is on the calculator. We're solving for K, which means that I need a delta G value. So what's the delta G? Well, maybe we could have went in the back of the textbook to find out the delta G values for each individual component in our balanced equation, products minus reactants, and then plug that delta G value in. However, if you're using delta G values in the back of the textbook, it's gotta be at room temp. It's gotta be at 298 or 298.15 Kelvin. We are not at that temperature. We're at 848, right? Or 575 degrees Celsius. So we have to find a different route. That's why we have to say, okay, what's another formula that I know that links my Gibbs free energy, delta G, to a temperature? And now that, that that's this formula down here, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. You could find a delta G value from any temperature, anything that's not room temp. Then you would just use the numbers in the back of the book. But in order to do that, we have to find the delta H for the whole reaction and the delta S. Now those values, we have to go into the back of the textbook to find them out. And I did the busy work. So I already went to the back of the textbook to gra grab all the delta H values and the delta S values for each individual substance. So we have to find the whole delta H, the enthalpy for the whole reaction, and we have to find the entropy for the whole entire reaction. I guess let's start off with delta H, right? If we're using the numbers in the back of the book, the formula is this. Delta H for the whole entire reaction just equals the sum, that's this little symbol here, the sum, AKA you're adding, sum of all your products, delta H products, minus the sum of all your delta H reactants. So it's basically products minus reactants. Now, are these numbers going to change? Well, this comes from your coefficients. You got two LiOHs, you have only one CO2, you have one Li2CO3, and you have one H2O. For each of the values that you find in the back of the textbook, you have to multiply by how many you have. 
It's just good practice to just multiply by one, but obviously it's going to be the same number, right? But for the first one, I would have to take two times negative 487.5 because I have two LIOHs. But then this one would be multiplied by one because I have one CO2. This one would be multiplied by one and the last for the H2O. Now you have to sum up the products and the reactants literally in the balance equation. It's LIOH plus CO2. So it would be these two values added together to get one big value. The same thing for the product side. Li2CO3 plus H2O. So add up those two values. So calc time. I'll do the reactants first. So I'll say two times negative 487.5. And then I'm going to add that to the negative 393.51. And I'm just double checking that I, I hope I plugged in all the correct numbers. Negative 8. 393. Yep, that looks good to me. So the total for the reactant side is negative 1,368.51. Now we got to do the same for the product side. So negative 1216.04 plus a minus, or in plus a negative, which is minus, right? 241.82. Okay, that's the total for the reactant. The product side, negative 1,457.86. Now we're going to use this formula. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals your product, which is negative 1,457.86, minus your reactant, which was a negative 1,368.51. Plug it in, and I'm going to put the answer over here. So the, the delta H for the whole entire reaction is this number, I'm going to grab the whole thing, minus this value. Okay, negative 89.35. Now units for delta H, if you're using the back of the textbook, is kilojoules, because those values are in kilojoules. They're in kilojoules per mole, but those values that you multiply, those are moles. So the unit mole will cancel. Okay, now we have to do the same thing for your delta S's. So I can use the same formula that I just used, but instead I can erase all the H's. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And hello, delta S for all of them. And then we're going to do literally the same exact thing, right? We got to multiply all the values that we found from the back of the textbook by the coefficients. So two, one, one, and one. And then you add up the two blues and you add up the two reds. So let's see, two times 42.8 plus 213.8, 42.8, 213.8, yep. So I get 299.4 for my total on my reactants, and then 90.17 plus 188.8, I get 278.97. Okay, let's find out that delta S for the whole entire reaction equals some of the products, 278.97, minus some of the reactants, 299.4, plug it in, delta S for the whole entire reaction is this value minus the 299. So I get negative 20.43. Units for delta S if you're using the units from the back of the textbook, remember, once again, the moles cancel out, so it would just be joules per Kelvin. Okay. Now I can use my delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. I'm solving for delta G. I just found out my delta H. I just found out my delta S. And the temperature was what we converted from before. So I have all three of them. So I'm going to pull this out, get rid of this, and now let's see, what is that delta G value that I'm gonna use? Delta G equals, 
Now hold the phone, right? Units have to match. Delta H kilojoules. Some of you might even have spotted it out. You might have been yelling at me. I heard you, right? Kilojoules. And then on the delta S side, you have joules. So we have to convert one or the other. Well, which one is easiest to convert, right? Would I convert my kilojoules into joules or would I convert my joules into kilojoules? Well, keep in mind, this is the ultimate formula that we want. And the R value tells me that I need this delta G in joules. So it would be the easiest if I just quickly convert the kilojoules into joules. Kilojoules into joules, that's just times by a thousand. So I could take this number, times it by a thousand. Similarly, I could just take the decimal, move it over to the right three times. So I get negative 89350. So negative 89,350 joules now. And that's the number that I'm going to plug in. So my delta H now is negative 89,350 minus uh, the temperature, which we already converted from before. That was the 848.15. And then it's being multiplied by the delta S value, which is negative 20.43. You could plug this all into the calculator at once, and the calculator will understand what uh, you know, uh, operation to perform first. So I'm going to say negative 89350 minus, I'm going to just input the Kelvin again, 848.15 times that delta S value of negative 20.43. Okay, there we go. So I have, oop, I don't want that. So I have negative 72,022.2955. And that's kilojoules. Actually, just kidding. That's joules. Now, keep in mind, I didn't round because it's not the final answer. The final answer, we want equilibrium constant. So we try not to round as much as we can. So this value now, the delta G, at this specific temperature is negative. 72,022.2955 joules. Now let's plug it in. So we have equilibrium constant equals E raised to the negative fraction. We have that big number. Well, technically it's a small number, right? Negative 72,022.2955 two, all divided by those two values, right? We have the R value, 8.314. And then we have the temperature value of 848. 848.15. What I would do is I would just get this to be one number because then you can take the E and raise it to whatever that one number is. So I'm just first just gonna simplify that up. Now a negative times a negative is a positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this value and times it by negative one, right? So I'm going to times it by negative one just to get it into a positive value. Then I'm going to divide by 8.314. And now since I'm not using parentheses, I'm going to press divide again to tell the calculator that I want the 848.15 in the denominator. Press enter. And we have a slew of decimals here, so 10.2137, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm going to use all the values. I'm just not going to write them because, you know, I don't want to waste time. But K equals, we're at the final step, E raised to that whole number, meaning the whole, you know, the decimal values. So to get the E button on the TI-84, it's second LN. That's the E button. Raise to, grab that whole number, press enter. There you go. We have a, you know, a big number, but we need sig figs. So let's see here. In this case, looks like five sig figs for temperature. We have four sig figs for the R value. So I'm just going to put four sig figs down here. So let's see. 
I'm going to put this into scientific notation. 2.72, the five rounds of seven up to an eight. And I'm just going to say times 10 to the one, two, three, four. So 2.728 times 10 to the fourth, no units for equilibrium constant, and you are done. And that's it. What'd you think? A lot of formulas in this one, but it's a good a reinforcer to just memorize all the different formulas that we can use. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. If you wouldn't mind, press the subscribe button. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. And I am looking forward to helping you with future problems. Bye-bye.